Let's all get a hymn book set. Turn to page number 205. We'll sing the first, second, and last verse of He Keeps Me Singing. <laughs>
page number 250. We'll sing all three verses. The burdens are lifted at Calvary.
dear and precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you so much for your blessings and goodness to us, Lord. Lord, you just do so much for us each and every day, Lord. And Lord, this is our chance to just do a little something back to you. Not that you need it, it's all yours, Lord, but the fact that we just are given the opportunity to say thank you through this ministry, Lord. Lord, and we just love to see how you take what little bit we do and the great things you've done and the precious souls that's found their way to you because of it. Lord, we also want to take just a minute to thank you for the upcoming meeting, Lord. Lord, we pray everything you've done here this week. It's just to bring honor and glory to you, Lord. And that precious souls might come to know you through this ministry, Lord. Lord, we love you. We thank you. As you bless the gift and the giver in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. been in this music today, I tell you, but he's not going to win. Things I've never seen before 
They, they talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. They don't invest. They don't progress. Uh, they don't go far. They don't see any miracles in their life. They're not happy. They're miserable. And a backslidden Christian wants to do one thing, make the next person as miserable as they are. That's, the, that's a fact. And folks, that's why we need a revival. Not just to see the lost saved, but to see the saved stirred up. Get them excited. Get them thinking about God and, 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 and giving to God time, talent, and treasure. Now, the more vessels, the more oil she would pour. And to have for her own use. If you don't put something into your, your spiritual relationship with God, he can't give you anything. He can only give you what you allow him to. He's not going to just bless you because you're sitting there. He's not the guy from a uh, uh, publisher's clearinghouse who's going to come to your door and knock on your door and give you $10 million. How many of y'all had that ever happen? I didn't think so. I didn't think so. fellow one time got mad. Been waiting on the publisher's clearinghouse to come to his house. And he got on the phone he called him. He said, y'all ain't never come to my house. I've been waiting 15 years. The lady on the other end of the line said, well, how many magazine subscriptions have you bought? He said, no. He said, well, you can't be in the pot and you can't be in the lottery unless you buy some magazines. Publishers Clearinghouse. That's what it means. Publishers, magazines. And he said, well, I don't want no magazines. So she says, you ain't going to get in the pot. You're not going to get a chance to win. That's the only way you win. And uh, he didn't want no part of it. He didn't want to spend no money. His last name was Mike Mills. <laughs> Tight one. He didn't want to invest, so he, wouldn't, he couldn't be in on the publisher's clearinghouse because he wouldn't buy a magazine subscription. Well, I'm probably like him. I'm probably one of those who's not going to buy a magazine subscription to get in on a lottery that I'm not going to win. But I'm going to tell you something. When it comes to the work of God in your life spiritually, you're only going to get out of it the effort you put into it. If you've got people you love and you want to see their lives change, you've got to make an effort to get them here. You've got to make an effort to bring them to the house of God. Get them under the word of God so God can do something with them. This oil is a picture of the Holy Spirit of God. And we are vessels that need to be prepared. We need to empty ourselves of sin, selfishness, in order to make room for the Holy Spirit to take over and to fill every corner of our being and so that he can be in full control of our life. That's where it stops. That's where it stops. And you know I'm telling the truth. Man, you with me up until I say, you got to give it all to God. <laughs> no, I ain't giving it all to God. I want to control my life. I want to have what I want to have. I want to do what I want to do. You're done. If you can't give it to God, you're in trouble. You've got to empty yourself. Get over yourself. And let God take control. You see, this is a responsibility and a full-time job for the Christian. If you're a Christian, your full-time job is getting over yourself, getting away from yourself, letting the Holy Spirit take you over and guide you. When you tell God you're not going to do something, he says, okay. He's not going to fight you. He created Adam and Eve and placed them in the Garden of Eden because he wanted someone to love him because they wanted to, not because they had to. Get it? And the devil knew it, and he messed it up because Adam and Eve had a free will choice, and they made the wrong one. Shouldn't that tell me and you if we're Adam and Eve's descendants, we ought to be a little more careful about the decisions we make? And the choices were, we ought to listen more and love God more and learn of God more so we can live for God more. It's pretty simple. But we want to have control. You ever catch yourself saying, I'm not going to do that. And God said, you're going to do it. You're done. You're finished. God can't use a Christian who will not surrender, listen, and learn. Every one of us has got sins which death so easily beset us. I don't care who you are, you've got a sin that you need to work on. If you're normal, you've got several. But you need to get out of your life 
to give God more than, more control. You know, <laughs> it amazes me how everybody, you know, they, they already know more than God. They already know more than everybody else. They don't need to listen to God. They don't need to listen to his word. They got it all under control. They got money in the bank, a car in the garage, and they got it easy on glide and control. If your life's on glide control, probably more than likely, God's not in control. Because if God's in control of your life, there's going to be an enemy against you. There's going to be an enemy that's not working on your side. And he's going to do everything he can to halt you. Is that not what you just said up here just a minute ago? When you're trying to do what's right, there's always a devil in the shadows. And he's always going to make sure that it doesn't go right to try to hinder you, hamper you, and halt you. Tonight, we need revival to get over ourselves so the oil of the Holy Spirit can fill our life and we can shine for him. Only one life. Let me tell you something, folks. When you get, everybody laughs at me because I say I'm old. But let me tell you something. You get to be 58, 59, 60 years old, you've got maybe 20 years if you're lucky. Maybe 20 years if you're lucky. 10 is more like it. You only promised 70 years. You get a little older, you start thinking about how much of your life and time you've wasted. How much of your life and time that you just didn't. When you get close to meeting God, you start thinking about him. I'm not picking on the young people. They, hopefully they got a long time to go. But you and I who are a little older, uh, we're knocking on the, the pearly gates. Okay? We're fixing to stand in front of him. And if Jesus comes back, we're all fixing to stand in front of him. Then age don't matter. When are we going to get serious to the point and the reality that we owe God for what he did for us? People don't like to hear preaching like that. Somebody asked me, they said, Preacher, why won't we run as much as this church down the road? I said, because I'll tell you what you need to hear, and I don't just flip for years. I'm just not going to pat you on the back and tell you how pretty you are. I'm going to tell you what the Word of God says, because that's what I need, and that's what you need. When are we going to get in a real life scenario that one day we're going to stand before God and we're going to give an account of how we've lived and how we've served and what we've done. We're going to give an account. You can get arrogant with me. You can get pompous with me. <laughs> You're not going to do it with God. You're not going to do it with the Lord. You're not going to get pompous with him. You're going to be humbled, but it's going to be too late. Today's the day to be humble. Today's the day to be honest with ourselves. Amen or amen. amen. We're to be like Jesus. He was filled with the Holy Ghost. Look at Luke chapter 2, verse 40. And the child, what? And waxed strong in the spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was what? Upon him. Let me ask you a question. Is the wisdom of God prevailing in your life? Is the Spirit of God controlling you? If He is, you'll know it. You'll know it. The joy of the Lord will be your strength. I got some worry about some Christians because they're mad all the time. Mad all the time about something. Upset about something all the time. That's not the joy of the Lord, folks. The joy of the Lord is if something bad happens, you just stand there and smile till the devil gets the machine right back there. And that's what she done. Oh, I didn't, he didn't like that. He's mad back there. Y'all pray for Mike. He just blew up bullfrog religion back there. <laughs> hey, you just stand there and wait on God. You don't get mad. You don't run. You don't quit. You just say, okay, God's doing something. Let him do what he's got to do. And then when the music stopped, Boy, but she thought it was going good, and then she had to do something else. She had to kick it in the high gear. Then she had to go acapella. Amen? Hey, she did a good job. I've seen people now. I've been a pastor a long time. I've seen everything. I've seen one woman one time get so mad because the tape didn't play. She just stomped off and sat down the pew in the whole service. Thank you for not doing that. <laughs> She ruined the whole service. Everybody was looking at her. She over there blew it up like a bullfrog. Mad. Tapes mess up. 
CDs mess up. That's life. You don't bore a gasket and <laughs> get mad and walk. You just say, okay, Lord, what, what do you got for me to do? Evidently, God wanted us to hear the words of that song and not the music. I heard some things in that song I'd never heard before because I was paying attention to the words. It's time for me and you to realize we need to be filled with the oil of the Holy Spirit of God. We need to get out of the way and just let God do what he's got to do. We've got to, got to stop hindering ourselves and hampering God, and we've got to let the grace of God be upon us. We don't get angry. We don't, we don't get mad. We don't quit. We don't throw in the towel. We don't show ourselves. We humble ourselves before God. And let God just do what he's got to do. Because he wants to do for you more than you even want done. And he will if you'll just give him the time. The filling of the Holy Spirit is a personal relationship that's got to be taken seriously and must be faithfully cared for every day of our life. To be filled with the Spirit is to empty yourself completely. Uh, and this is the task that takes serious work and serious effort of our heart uh, in our life for the Lord and his work. You've got to put God first, not you. You've got to put the work of God first and not you. Now, I understand you've got to work. I understand you've got responsibilities. You've got families. I understand that. But God's got to be number one in making your decisions. If he's not, you're going to make some disastrous decisions. Disastrous. And I'm telling you, folks, I see it every day. I see Christians who you, you know they've got potential, you know they've got opportunity, but they make the stupidest and the dumbest decisions they can possibly make. Wrong decisions. Everybody's got this up. Well, God will understand. No, he will not. If you make a wrong decision, God will not understand. He will not let you slide. It's that serious. He will not let you slide because you make one of two bad decisions. There are consequences. Are you listening to me? There are consequences for the decisions you make. We're raising a generation of kids today, and, and we're teaching them there's no consequences to what they do. And it's wrong. And when it gets to the point they've made so many bad decisions, they can't make a right one. Are you listening? They've made so many bad decisions, but they no longer can make a right one, and their life is, is, is falling apart, and they can't get it together, and they're heading down fast. It's because somebody didn't teach them. But at some point in your life, you just can't do whatever you want to do, and you can't say whatever you want to say. And really, I'll just shoot and be honest, you can't be what you want to be. You've got to do what God wants you to do. You gotta walk the way God wants you to walk. You gotta live the way He wants you to go. You've got to say no to yourself. You gotta say no. Now listen to me. This little lady gathered those pots because she believed in Elijah, the man of God. Was Elijah perfect? Absolutely not. He scared the death of a woman. Don't you love me? And y'all been scared of a woman too. Especially you've been married. I seen one scared of one moment ago. Y'all can't see what I see, but he was shaking back there trying to get that thing to work. He scared of that woman. Scared of that woman. Jezebel was scared. I mean, uh, Elijah was scared to death. Jezebel was going to kill him. You know why? Because she killed all the rest of them. Read your Bible. He had a reason to be nervous. He had a reason. He wasn't perfect. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. But he was a man of God. And he knew the word of God. Now, I'm not perfect. I'll be the first one to admit it, but don't you say amen right there. I'm not perfect. But I'll tell you one thing. If I'm preaching you the Bible from the word of God, I'm the man of God. Because I'm preaching you the word of God. I'm trying to help you tonight about this story about the pots. We need to gather all the pots we can gather. She believed that Elijah knew what he was talking about because it measured up to the book. You see, today you don't get preachers because they know the Bible. You get preachers who can make you laugh. I've had some preachers make me cry, and I'm glad they made me cry so they make me laugh. Amen or amen. They won't preach.
preachers who are short-winded. Now I'm short-winded if I'm walking. But that's about the only time I'm short-winded. You're going to find out in a few minutes too, big boy. Folks, when we don't get out early tonight, it's E.T.'s fault, okay? Y'all get him when the church service is over, all right. I ain't the longest-winded preacher in town. I'll prove it to you after church. I'm not the longest-winded one in, church, in town. But I'm not going to quit till I give you what God wants me to give you. Say amen. And I'm not going to back up because you give me the pouty face. There's people that I've been here a long time. I've been in the ministry a long time. And I've had people come in my office and look across me. I had one woman come into my office one time and looked at me and took that long finger. <laughs> you don't quit preaching on this certain subject. We're leaving. I didn't try to stir up no trouble. I just said, ma'am, what I'm teaching is right. It's from the Word of God. It's the truth. She said, you preach it one more time, I'll tell you one thing, I'm going to leave. Me and my husband are out of here. I said, okay. Well, the Lord didn't let me preach on that. I, I, you know me, Ken will tell you, I'll send my messages months ahead. I, I don't preach just off the cuff. This thing's been in the can for a week before we even started preaching. So I got into a funeral. And in the talking with the family, they said, our mama believed in this and she wants you to preach this on her feet. I said, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what row? I'm going to make the family happy, but if so-and-so comes to this funeral, ooh, I'm in trouble. And guess who was the third one in the building coming to the funeral? There she was. I said, oh, Lord. I opened the Bible, I preached that pill just like I had it written, just like I had it done. I preached on that subject, and I nailed it to the wall, and when I come to church Sunday morning, the keys was under my door in my office. They were gone. And they ain't never come back. I run into her in the grocery store one time. She says, she says, we miss y'all. I said, we miss y'all too. She said, but you know what you done. <laughs> so, I said, what did I do? You know what you done. She <laughs> wouldn't even cut me no slack. None at all. I'm not here to make you happy. That's not my job. My job is to give you the word of God just like it is. To help you know who God is. And if I water it down, if I mellow it out, if I don't shoot it to you exactly the way the Bible says it, I'm going to stand before God and give an account one day. Because this is his word, not mine. So, I love people. I'm in the ministry because of people. But believe me, I love God more. And I'm going to put him first. And we all need to do that. Am I perfect? Absolutely not. But I'll tell you what is perfect. That's the word of God. Say amen. amen. It's perfect. If we believe that Jesus is the son of God, we'll go out in the highways and hedges and we'll bring in as many people to the house of God in hopes that they will find Christ and be saved. Look at Ephesians 5.18. From outside influence, it says, And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess. I, you can't get no plainer than that. Now these sipping saints, they're delusional. But, I mean, do, do not be drunk with wine wherein is excess. They teach us in school. How many of y'all been in school? Some of y'all don't even know where you're at. Okay, been in school. They teach you in school. You take one drink and you're what? You're impaired. Or we call it drunk. Drunk. So if one drink gets you drunk, sound like me, you ain't supposed to drink none. Say amen. I know the sipping saints don't like that. But I'm fierce so off them when they go to heaven to the grocery store and try to buy some bed stupid. They ain't going to be there. They ain't going to have no wine and no... no uh, fermented wine and a liquor in heaven. Ain't no Jim Beam up there. There may be a man named Jim Beam up there, but there may be no bottles of Jim Beam up there. That I promise you. If someone pours alcohol or drugs in their body, it's an outside source that takes over the physical and the mental state of that person. Excess in the Greek is the word asotea. 
Christ. I tell you, unsavedness, wastefulness, recklessness, lustless and tenuous, shamelessness, excess, riot. Folks, what happens when sin gets in your life, it becomes excessive. It takes you over. And it destroys you, whatever the sin is. I don't care what the sin is, which does so easily beset you. It will overtake you. When the outside takes over and quenches and grieves the Holy Spirit in our soul, the Spirit is rendered useless by our choice, and we start living in the excesses of, of the inside rather than the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why you've got to pay, t pay attention to what you see, what you hear, what you put in your mind, what you put in your heart, because it's either going to empower the Holy Spirit of God or it's going to quench him and shut him down. How many had your power go off the other night? Couldn't do nothing, could you? I was worried about E.T. because he's never worried about me. I scared E.T. didn't have no power. I called him, checked on him. He said, I'm all right. Don't worry about me, preacher. I got, what's that thing called? A generator. I got a generator. We're doing good. He, was, he had that generator running. He had power. Let me say something to you. And I'm not trying to say this to be mean. I want to help you. Is the power on or off? You didn't have no problem knowing if your power was on or off, did you? If it was off, you couldn't do nothing. If it was on, you could do anything. Listen to me. If the Holy Spirit is in your life and in control, you can do anything for God. There's no stopping you for the Lord. There's no stopping you from serving God. There's no mountain you can't climb, no valley you can't crawl. If you'll just let him turn the power on. But I'll tell you one thing, if he's off, you can't do nothing. You can try, but you're not going to get anywhere fast. If we're not careful, the influences of the world around us will influence us louder and stronger than the Holy Spirit within us. Either we're controlled by the Spirit of the living God or we're controlled by the excesses of this world. And I'm telling you, I'm in this world, you're in this world, you know I'm not lying. They are pouring it on me and you like you would not believe. They're trying to push the world on our throats just as hard as they can. Why? Because they don't believe in God. But if we don't believe in God greater than they don't believe in God, they're never going to know who God is. You get what your preacher's saying? If we're not going to be louder and prouder and we're not going to be more vocal and, and, and more uh, bright in our light, shining our light to this dark world, they're never going to know. They've got to see a difference in me and you. They've got to see a difference in our walk and our talk. They've got to see somebody else is running our life and not us. Amen? Oh, listen to me. Not just alcohol, not just gambling, immorality, music, money, materialism, philosophy, influence. All this is drowning the church. And the church is not the building. It's me and you. It ought to be hard for the devil to trip us up. It ought to be hard for us to make a bad decision. If the Holy Spirit's in power, you're not going to make a bad decision. You're not going to back up. You're going to go forward. But my question to you tonight is, is he in control of your life or are you? If you're in control of your life, you're in big trouble. But if God's in control of your life, boy, the sky is blue. I love that song by the periods, blue sky coming. Say amen. I like that song. Why? Because I like them blue skies. Amen? I like them blessings. I like them good things. I want to enjoy life. I want to see God move. I want to see people saved. I want to see lives changed. But I'm telling you, in the, in the environment we're in tonight, it's hard. You're going to leave here tonight and something's going to come on the radio try to take this message out of your mind. Something's going to be on the internet when you come home or you're on your cell phone or, or whatever device you use. Something's going to try to take this message out of your mind. Maybe the devil's trying to make some of you mad here tonight because I'm preaching so hard. I'd rather preach to you hard and tell you the truth and help you than lie to you and let you go your way and then have to bury you. 
You know what I'm telling is the truth. We really, if we don't think we need revival, they're not going to have it. That's why I'm trying to convince you. We need it. I need it. You need it. There's not a person in this room, a person on the internet listening to this. We all need a great awakening. And the only way you're going to get it is through the water of the word. The only way you're going to get it is the oil is filled up in all the vessels in every corner of our life. Look at John 15, 19. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, and I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. If you don't believe the devil hates you tonight, you got your head to sound like an ostrich. He hates you. And he'll lie to you and he'll do anything to get you to do what he wants you to do so he can destroy your testimony. You only have one testimony. One. If you lose it, it's gone. My job as a pastor many times is to try to help people understand the value of their testimony and that you only have one. But you know what I found out? Some people just don't care. You can talk to them till you're blue in the face. You can love them till you don't squirrels and melt to death. But if they don't have a mind to listen to God and listen to you and listen to his word, they're just going to go right out that door and do exactly what they want to do. But I can't put it back together when they come back and it's all falling apart. I can't do it. It's too late then. I have people coming to me all the time crying, preacher, preacher, what am I going to do? I'm going to say something should have been done months ago. Something should have been done years ago. You should have made different choices. There are consequences in decisions, and you can't change them. I had one fellow one, one, say one time, he done married this lady, and they done had three or four kids together, and he come to my office and says, I'm leaving her, I'm done, I've had all I can take. I'm through. I'm walking away from her, and I ain't having nothing else to do with her the rest of my life. I sit back in my desk and I put my leg out and I said, Buddy, you're delusional. I said, You divorce her. Go to court, get your right in the divorce. You can get a divorce, but you ain't never getting rid of her. She's going to have her hand in your pocketbook the rest of your days. And she's going to control you with them four kids. You better understand something, sir. When you make a decision, it's for life. Divorce, no divorce. You ain't never getting rid of them. You've got to live with it the rest of your days. I know that's not popular preaching, but it's the what? It's the truth. He went home, got right with his wife, and been doing fine ever since. <laughs> Say amen or amen. Folks, I'm telling you tonight, we've got to make some decisions, some right decisions, because the world hates you. Don't listen, listen to me. If you've got a decision to make, don't run to 50 people and ask them what to do because you're going to get 50 answers. And I'll guarantee you 49 of them is going to be wrong. And you might be lucky if one of them is right. If you've got a decision to make, you know who you ought to run to? God and his word. And just pray, 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 and search, 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 search until he tells you what's the right answer. Amen or amen. I have written unto you, fathers, 1 John 2, 14, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, listen to this, the love of the Father is not in him. You can't take that out of the King James Bible. You can take it out of one of them perversions, but you can't take it out of the King James. If you love the world more than you love God, you're in big trouble. You're in big trouble. The key to living a spirit-filled life is loving the Lord with all your heart, soul, and mind. In the world we live in today, that is a monumental task. But we can do it by the grace of God. Say amen. from outside influences. Now look on the inside influence. Look at the next part of verse 18, Ephesians chapter 5. But be filled with the Spirit. We love
love the Lord with, in, by intentionally, by faith, putting him first. The Holy Spirit's influences take us to a level of spiritual usefulness that allows God to flow through our lives and miracles take place. Miracles take place as a result of, listen to me, we're about to go home, surrendering faith. Here's the key. When you believe him and you trust him, you let him lead your life. You'll surrender to him. You'll succumb to him. You'll follow him. You'll do it his way. The Lord can and will use you mightily if you love and surrender to him and obey his voice instead of the clamor of the world around us. In each of the passages of Scripture, when the Holy Spirit was treated with respect through the obedience or witness of the Word of God, the Holy Spirit was empowered in the, in the lives of Christians through their faith and willingness to submit and surrender and serve Him. i got to do this real fast. I'm not going to read the whole verse. We can just pick them up here real quick and we'll come back. Judges chapter 15, verse 14. Loosed mightily. And when he came into Le Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him. The Spirit of the Lord came what? Mindly upon him, and the, cord, the cords that were upon his shoulders became as flax, and burnt with fire, and the bands loosed from off his hands, and he found the new jawbone of an ass, and he put forth his hand, he took it, and he slew a thousand men. That was in the Old Testament. We got the Holy Spirit with us all the time. We're not out to kill people, but we sure are out to win them to the Lord. And I believe the Holy Spirit's mightily upon us. We're going to do what? Soul winner. We're going to leave here tonight. We're going to bring some people back tomorrow night. We're going to bring some people back Tuesday night. We're going to bring some Christians and get right with God. Why? Why? Because we believe God's mighty power can help us do what we... The devil's like, you can't do it. That's a lie. You can. They increase my Deuteronomy 6 story. Hear therefore Israel and observe to do it. That it may be what? War with thee. And that you may what? Increase how? Mightily. As the Lord God of our fathers hath promised thee in a land that floweth with milk and honey. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. There's plenty of potential here and down the Pennsylvania County to do great things for God. Amen? Hey, we can be loosed from the bands of the enemy. We can be increased mightily by the Spirit of God. Number three, magnified mightily. Look at Acts 1970. And this was known to all the Jews and the Greeks that dwelling in Ephesus. And fear fell on them. How many? All. all. And the name of the Lord Jesus Christ was what? Magnified. And many of that, there's that word, believed, came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them which also used curious arts, that's uh, divination, that's the occult, that's devil worship, brought their books together and burned them before all men and they counted the price of them and was 50, uh, found 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the what? Of God and what? Prevailed. If we want God to prevail, it starts with us. Being loosed from the bands. Being filled with the Holy Ghost. And then God will use us to do mighty, mighty things. They were looking inward to the Holy Spirit of the Lord for their guidance and their empowerment. The world is falling apart. It's failing. And today, because of Hollywood and Washington promoting to thine own self be true, that's a lie. To God be true. Amen? Love him, trust him. Real quickly, see, you move on. Around us on every side be an influence. Folks, in every direction, both inward and outward, we're to be a blessing and an influence for God and to everyone around us at all times. This is an awesome responsibility that has got to be acknowledged, applied, and always done. This takes a joyful and a thankful heart. It's not always easy to be joyful and be happy. It's not always easy to be thankful and appreciative. Yet that's why God has given us the Holy Spirit in our hearts to enable us to do what he asks and expects of us as his servants, even though it's hard. Listen, if it's hard, it's worth doing. Amen? It's going to be hard to take two nights and give it to God. I know people are busy, but it'll be worth it if you do it. If you do it, I've got to do this fast. Number one, singing praises inwardly to others, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, 
That's what we tried to do tonight. I'm so proud of Diane. She got up and sang that song even though the CD or tape didn't work. Hey, she was singing us a, a spiritual song. Amen? Trying to encourage us with melody. Uh, Ken, skip down to number two. Making thankful melody upward to the omnipotent. Not only did she encourage us, but she honored God. Say amen. It's a singing and making melody in your heart to the who? And giving thanks always for all the things unto God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. As you do this renewing for yourself at the same time, it's praising God and it empowers the Holy Spirit who is God that lives within you. You try. Cut that old country music off, that rock music off. Put something in with God's and watch your spirit change. Watch your attitude change. It will empower the Holy Spirit. It will please God. It will help you to bless other men. Kim, we've got to skip down to number three. Submitting it humbly outward to others, verse 21. Submitting yourselves one to another, what? In the fear of God. Not only surrendering to God, but we've got to do what we've got to do for other people. We've got to give up our time, talent, and treasure in ourselves for other people. Why? Simply because when we surrender, we do great things for God. When we surrender, we do great things for other people. And you know what's going to last past this life? What you do for God, for others. That's what's going to last into the next life. And all I'm trying to say, folks, is the way the world's looking right now, it's not going to be too long before we're all on the other side. Whether by the grave or by the rapture, it's not going to be long. And when we get there, let me ask you something. You're not going to keep your crowns and wear them on your head. If you win any crowns, you're going to lay them at Jesus' feet. There's a song on the new CD, the Tribute Quartet. The song's entitled this, Must I Go Empty-Handed? That's not what we want to do. We don't want to go to heaven empty-handed. We want to take some people with us. And we want to take some people with us because we influenced them by the power of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. And God reached through us and touched them and they saw their need of saving. They got saved. You're not going to take your car with you to heaven. I can't even hardly get mine across town. <laughs> Much less get it to heaven. You're not going to take your money with you to heaven. But you can take your friends, your family, and your neighbors if you win them to Jesus. Every head's bowed. Every eye's closed. Don't be influenced from outside influences. Be influenced by the influence on the inside, the Holy Spirit of God. And then go out around us on every side and be an influence. Sing praise. Make melody. Submit humbly to others. Serve in humility. Serve in the Lord with all humility of mind. Serve helpfully. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. Woe unto him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Serve others. Help them. Lift them up and lift them to Christ. And serve him from the heart. Not with eye service as men pleases, but as servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart with good will doing service as to the Lord and not unto men. We ought to be doing this for God because God can work through us, not because we can do it. I've known several preachers in my lifetime who they always would say, me, my, mine, and they're no longer in the ministry today. We don't say me, my, mine. We say his, our Lord, our Savior. He's our all in all. I know I preached hard tonight, but I love you. And I see a room full of potential in this room that if we all just drew up near to God this place in a few months, we'd just be packed from wall to wall. But we've got to make some right decisions. We've got to repent of some things. We want real revival. The next two nights has got to start tonight. God's people coming to the altar with tears in their eyes, asking God to forgive them and to help them and to empower them falling in love with Jesus all over again. That's what we got to do tonight. Tonight, I beg you, start revival tonight. Start with your heart. Just come to this altar and say, Lord, lay some soul upon my heart and love that soul through me that I may ever do my part to win 
that soul today. When you get to that point in your life when all you want to do is see people saved, you're right where you need to be. People who are close to God, that's all they want to do is see people get saved. All they want to do is see people get right with God and live for the Lord. That's their heartbeat. That's their desire. What's your heartbeat and your desire tonight? Stand to your feet. Father, I've preached as best I can. I hope it's helped someone. I hope tonight it'll spark a revival in my heart and my soul. Lord, you spoke to me tonight. I see things in my life I need to take care of. And Lord, I pray all of us will do that. I pray we'll all come to this altar. And I pray we'll all come right now. And we'll do business with you. Today's prayers, Lord, are tomorrow's answers. God, help us to surrender tonight. In Jesus' name. Heads are bowed, eyes closed, move, already come. Come join them. Neil, stand, sit, do what you got to do. And let's start revival tonight. Come on, right now.